few dozen brainwashed maniacs can't keep the city hostage forever. Well, duh. These videos are not for children. If you're a children, then piss off. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, The Infuso. And in the past, I've spoken about the Joker in Gotham. I talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Who, you know, to be fair, was still good, but was just also, in addition, very ugly. But today, I'd like to cap this series off by talking about the others. As I've mentioned before, being that Gotham was actually a Fox-made show using famous DC properties, it didn't have the rights to each and every one of the characters from Batman. As a matter of fact, they were blatantly prohibited from using one in particular. And it might have been one of the most important ones. Gotham was not legally allowed to have a Joker. They could allude to him, they could show what potentially could inspire a Joker in the future, but they could not have one of their own. Of course the showrunners knew that that would never fly with a Batman audience. Because if you're making a Batman show, you kinda need to acknowledge the Joker in some capacity. Even other Batman related shows that weren't allowed to showcase the character did at least acknowledge him. Other shows managed to get away with glimpses of the character in passing. But ultimately, none of these shows could ever have his presence felt. Those in charge developed what was honestly a pretty good idea in theory. Since they couldn't come right out and call a character the Joker, they decided instead to let their audience do it. Stating that this prequel series wouldn't have an official origin for the Clown Prince of Crime, but instead would provide multiple candidates who could possibly go on to be the Joker. A very smart tactic creatively given what they were going up against legally. And I also think that this fits the mystique of the character. I mean, we're talking about a man who once said, if I am to have a past, I would prefer it to be multiple choice. This is indicative of that. It's sort of the perfect match. This was a creative solution to a creative restriction. While the future looked bright at first, eventually it would pale. This was a really interesting premise that I think would have worked well with this character given the ambiguity of his backstory. Which parts of which of his stories are real? Was any of it real? Who really is this guy? What better way to pay tribute to the man with multiple pasts than by keeping it just as vague as he does? Let the audience validate it. And I think that's kind of awesome. Of course we know that ultimately the show would crown a clown. Several, actually. But before that was made official, and actually even a little bit after that, there were a couple red herrings along the way and sometimes emphasis on the red. While it was stated that the show wasn't going to overuse or rely too heavily on this trope, they sure did offer up a lot of what-ifs and could-bes in the first season of the show. In the pilot episode, we're shown an unfunny comedian who bombs in front of mob boss Fish Mooney. This, of course, is a reference to The Killing Joke, one of the most famous Batman and Joker stories ever told. A comic which dives into the twisted clown's psyche, where he claims that in one telling of his past, he was a struggling comedian who was forced to get involved with the mob. The following episode, we're shown a man falling into a vat of chemicals, just as the Joker has been known to do on an occasion or two, and would actually later do in this same series. There was also an episode that saw Jim Gordon trapped in Arkham, where a very familiar and frightening laugh could be heard in the background. We're never shown who's making those noises, but it's a pretty safe bet that it was placed here as a potential Easter egg. This gimmick, however, would become a moot point early on when they introduced a potential Joker in episode 16. A Joker that was essentially too good to not be true. If the performance wasn't strong enough to get people talking, and by the way, it was, then the marketing for this episode sure was. This was more than just a subtle nod to the character. This was this series essentially promoting a character they weren't actually allowed to use. The promotion for this episode doesn't make a whole lot of sense either, come to think of it. As this whole episode is building up to this reveal, the audience isn't supposed to know of his sinister nature. But the trailers for this kind of ruined the fun of a first-time watch, as everyone was going into this episode already knowing that Jerome was a villain. This performance got a lot of people talking. I actually remember this being the first episode that really caught on with a bunch of people. All of a sudden, everyone I knew was talking about the show and what they did with the Joker. You know, whether it be good or bad, everyone had their opinions, but everyone was watching. And everyone had an opinion. Apparently the show itself didn't get that memo though, as the very next episode also introduced us to another possible origin. 
Uh, granted, these were all filmed around the same time, and I don't think the effects of that last episode would have affected this one. The following episode is the first appearance of the Red Hood Gang, a bunch of criminals who don a red mask to hide their identity. Which, of course, is another piece of the Joker's backstory, as prior to becoming the Joker, he was the Red Hood. A crime boss, or the victim of a crime boss, depending on what story you're hearing. I especially enjoy this as a probable ground zero for the character because it literally could be any of these people or anybody who gets this mask after the fact. I think the way that they ended this episode was meant to reflect that. Like, oh, look, this kid has the Red Hood now. Maybe he grows up to be the Red Hood and then he grows up to be the Joker. Regardless, by the end of season one, the jig was up and everyone knew it. The audience had already accepted Cameron Monaghan as their Joker, despite the fact that they were never actually supposed to. This led the series with an interesting dilemma, because they've successfully created an impressive iteration of an iconic character, but they weren't allowed to even admit that he was in fact that character. So in order to both give audiences what they want while doing their best to not get sued, the show brought Jerome back, with the expressed intent of killing him all. This way they capitalize on the character's popularity one last time, while also reassuring Warner Brothers that their pseudo-Joker wasn't the real deal. It sort of created this teeter-totter effect, where the character's reappearance made fans of the show happy, but then made Warner Brothers mad, and his immediate dismissal made Warner Brothers happy, but made fans of the show mad. So, just a constant case of win some, lose some. In Jerome's wake, the show offered up the cult of Jerome. Exactly what they sound like? That's what they were. They were those that worshipped him and put his madness on a pedestal. Now this was done in an attempt to legitimize the popular character and to make his death become the Joker's birth. The show wasn't subtle in insisting that one of these cult members would go on to become the actual Joker. And this move pleased nobody. First off, making Joker some know-nothing nobody and a cheap copycat of another criminal clown? Excuse me? The Joker? The causer of chaos was just discount dysfunction? The master manipulator was nothing more than a mere follower? Just walking down the path that someone else laid out for him? I'm sorry, but this is blatant blasphemy. To suggest that the Joker just stole his act from someone else makes the character look entirely second rate and it diminishes all that makes this character feel special. Everything that made him interesting and unique was just all borrowed from someone else. That's a really bitter pill to have Batman fans swallow. The show did play with the idea for a while, even seemingly setting up other specific cult members as maybe Jokers. You got Dwight and Jerry. There's another plot entirely outside of the cult where a guy who was afraid of clowns was dosed with Scarecrow's fear toxin. I don't know if you want to count that, but I, I suppose that you could. They tried and tried to get audiences to buy into and believe that any of these clowns could be the clown prince of crime, but I don't think they were ever remotely successful in that endeavor. Actually, I'll be honest with you, I don't think any of them even came close. There was never once another suitable choice outside of the guy they wound up going with. I think the Dwight character was bizarre and interesting, but he didn't really fit the Joker mold. And look, I'm a big fan of Polka Dot Man over here. He does good work, and here is no exception. I mean, you don't get to be a devout follower of the Joker in multiple continuities if you don't know what you're doing to some extent. The guy was good enough to leave an impression, but it's not the impression that the Joker would make. Jerome Valeska was just a vibe, man. Which is why he was brought back to life again, only to die once more. And then plot twist, his evil brother is actually the Joker. I think by the time that plot twist came around, there was no more dancing around the details. Everyone knew that Cameron Monaghan was playing the Joker, even if he wasn't actually allowed to. No one has any fond memories of these Jokers. Hell, nobody even has any memories of these Jokers. Ultimately, all of these could-be clowns are mostly forgotten, and for good reason. They weren't worth remembering. In the bigger picture, they're hardly even a footnote in the character's Gotham legacy. And in the even bigger picture of the history of the Joker, they're hardly even existent. They're just useless trivia that no one's ever going to question you on. Gotham's one and only true Joker was Cameron Monaghan. Both of them. So if you like this video and want to see more Gotham content here on this channel, let me know in the comment section below by leaving a comment saying, Who is this Joker? With all that being said, I was your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso, and I thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. I am vengeance.
I am the knight, and that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.